Antonio. So I imagine this week's question will be easy for you to answer. And it is, what is ITC? Instrumental Transcommunication. Where did it originate from? Who started this? And can you tell me anything about the first people that started to do this and their projects? Good luck. Thank you, Jane, for asking me that uh, question. I know when I was new to the field and I first heard ITC and then somebody started talking about EVPs and all that, I was actually totally baffled as to what they were talking about. And uh, I actually thought it was some kind of app or something. So, But uh, I'm going to try to answer your question. Um, and try to do it briefly this particular field is so so huge and so in debt that um, we could have a total class on it or spend days just covering everything uh, that's in the field so I'm gonna try to keep it brief and and try to answer your question so Alright, let me begin with the standard definition of what ITC. ITC is Instrumental Transcommunication, and it is the name that it was given by Professor Ernst Sikowski, a German physicist, for the technique of contacting spirits using any electronic means to capture the images of spirits and to record their voices, better known as EVP or Electronic Voice Phenomena. All right, now that we have the uh, standard definition out of the way and we kind of have a clue to what ITC is, let's uh, talk about an event that, uh, although it's not very well known or talked about much, um, it was an event that was brought to, to light by uh, a Raymond Cass. And I believe that it was kind of pivotal in getting people started into exploring unknown voices through uh, radio communication. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this event and uh, let's see what we can make of it. In 1930s, mysterious voices speaking in unknown languages were picked up by the Army and Air Force units in Norway and Sweden. These voices reached its peak in March 1934, where they abruptly just stopped. It was suspected that these voices were the Nazis, however, a search of the German archives after the war failed to provide any evidence that this was indeed the Nazis. These were heard also by many ham radio operators around the world, but due to the lack of recorders, there is a lack of evidence of these voices and events. Was this a worldwide electronic voice phenomena event from the deceased? Was it a warning of the impending tragedy that was about to unfold? World War II? Or perhaps this was contact from alien life forms from other worlds, just as Nikola Tesla once thought. It is unknown and probably will never be known. However, this event helped trigger the interest and research into electronic voice phenomena. Let us look at one of the pioneers of this field. Frederick Jurgensen, 1903 to 1987, was born in Odessa, Ukraine on February 8, 1903. His mother was Swedish and his father was of Danish descent, who was a practicing physician in Odessa, where the family had moved from Estonia. After living through World War I and the Russian Revolution as a child, Jurgensen trained as a painter at the Art Academy and as a singer and musician at the Odessa Conservatory. In 1943, he was driven out by the war and he moved to Stockholm, Sweden. He married and became a Swedish citizen. 
Here he also learned his tenth language. It was here he had purchased a reel-to-reel -reel recorder to practice his singing. However, due to the colder climate of Sweden, he suffered a voice issue and had to quit singing. During the following years, he painted portraits of wealthy Swedes and motifs from Stockholm. He was even once commissioned by Pope Pius. In Frederick Jurgensen's 1967 book, he writes of his life-changing moment. On Friday the 12th of June 1959, we drove into the country in the early afternoon, and I had taken my tape recorder with me for the first time with the purpose of recording different bird songs. When I arrived at the forest hut settling in the attic, I installed a new tape and placed a microphone close to the open window in front of which was strung thin nylon netting. Shortly thereafter, I turned on the tape recorder because a finch had alighted close by the house. I checked the recording after the tape ran for about five minutes. What I heard was very strange. I was hearing a roaring or a hissing static sound like a shower in which you could identify the chirping of the finch but as if was coming from a distance. My first thought was that one of the tubes was damaged during the trip. Nevertheless, I turned the recorder on again and let the tape run. My second recording, it was just like before. I was hearing this strange hissing and the distant bird chirping. Then all of a sudden there sounded a trumpet solo as if to announce something. I listened with continued surprise as suddenly a male voice began to speak in Norwegian. Though it was very quiet, I could clearly understand the words. The man was talking about bird songs at night. And I heard a number of chattering, whistling and splashing sounds, and among them what seemed to be the chirping of a sparrow. Suddenly the bird choir fell silent, and with that so did the hissing sound. And the next instant, the twittering of a finch was audible, and in distance you could hear a titmouse. The tape recorder was working perfectly again. After this incident, Jurgensen dove in and began to work on these electronic voice phenomena. During this time, the UFO craze had begun catching the attention of the world. It was here that he suspected he was communicating with alien life forms. Later on, feeling let down upon his discovery that this was not alien life forms, and in his words, felt ashamed. So, as Jurgensen mentions, as he was turning off the recorder for the final time, he heard, Please wait, wait, listen to us. During this period of inactivity, Jurgensen started to have a strange phenomenon. He writes, it started with a strange sound phenomenon being audible around me during the course of the day. For example, when I was sitting in my studio listening to the splashing of the rain, I could clearly hear short calls, words, or partial words. Yes, among them, even longer sentences. That originated from the drizzle or rain dropping sounds from the water, and that were whispered undeniably by a female voice. For the most part, the sentences repeated themselves and were spoken sometimes in German and sometimes in Swedish. And they went something like, hold contact with the equipment, hold contact, please listen, daily contact with equipment, please, please listen. The same words were even audible in the crackling of the stove fire or in the rustling of paper. Jurgensen began to think he was suffering from the symptoms of schizophrenia. However, with the thought of having captured voices on tape, he quickly brushed this thought off. Eventually, he dove back into his work where he began capturing many EVPs. In spring 1960, one of the voices told him to use the radio as a medium, and this was the technique he used until his death. He connected a microphone and a radio receiver to the tape recorder, and in this way he could have a real-time conversation with his friends. Usually he set the radio reception in between the frequencies where there's generally a variation of noises. Later he fixed the receiving frequencies to around 1445 to 1500 kilohertz. 1485 kilohertz is now called the Jurgensen frequency. Frederick Jurgensen's work led to many others entering this field and producing great results. One example of this would be Konstantin Routov, 1909-1974. He, 
He was a Latvian writer and intellectual. In 1964, Radov read Friedrich Jurgensen's book Voices from Space and was so impressed by it that he arranged to meet Jurgensen in 1965. He then worked with Jurgensen to make some EVP recordings and go down into history as another great pioneer of this field. Alright, let me uh, throw another term out at you. Uh, I'm going to throw out uh, DRV. Uh, which is uh, direct radio voices and it is a method that seeks to obtain anomalous communications directly through the loudspeakers of the radios. Hey, hello. In 1949, an Italian gentleman by the name of Marcello Bacci attends a mediumistic sitting in London, which will change the course of his life. Bacci would go down to be known as the man who offered the world some of the strongest possible evidence of not only the survival of the soul, but of its ability to continue communicating directly with the living. Marcello Bacci of Grosseto, Italy, began to dial in spirit voices through his vacuum tube radio in the 1960s through an experiment known as the Direct Radio Voice Method, or DRV. Bacci's early experiments were carried out using the same methodologies as famous experimenters of the time, such as Friedrich Jurgensen and Konstantin Rodev. Bacci's experiments are carried out in the presence of many people in his home, sometimes up to as many as 70 at a given time. For those who attend his sessions, there is no doubt at all that they are in direct communication with someone in the spirit world as they claim their voices are instantly recognizable. To hear the spirit voices, Marcello constantly adjusts knobs as he tunes into the white noise of the short wave band between 7 and 9 megahertz. He tunes into the white noise which is band free by turning to the knobs to just the right frequency spirit voices can be heard coming through the speaker and giving messages. The participants can often immediately detect that it is the voice of their loved one. The communication can vary from as short as 10 seconds to a maximum of 4 minutes. The spirit voices are clear and different from each other acoustically. Then once communication has ended, the normal static of the radio returns back like a radio radio. Skeptical researchers and scientists from across the globe have taken an attempt to debunk Bocce's radio communication. And this is where things get really interesting. One particular attempt was the use of voice recognition software provided by the FBI and used to conduct voice print analysis. Like a fingerprint, voice analysis can be used with near certainty to detect a speaker's identity. Voice recordings were obtained from relatives of their loved ones when they were alive and analyzed against the supposed spirit voices coming from the radio. Time and time again, these spirit voices have been proven to be almost an exact match, with one voice, that of Chiara Lenzi, matching with an accuracy of 97%. Experts claim that there is no way a voice which matches to an accuracy of 97% can be anyone other than the person in question. During scientific observations, particular care was taken to see if any external form of transmission device was being used and scientists enclosed Bocce's radio in a special cabinet which prevented any form of external radio waves penetrating. This still made no difference to the result of the machine. It still transmitted voices and messages. Another instance, Professor Mario Salvatore Festa uh, took things one step further in his attempt to explain 
how Bocce's radio works. During one particular communication session, when the spirit voices were being received, Professor Festa removed two of the valves from Marcello's Bocce's radio, which should have effectively disabled the radio. The spirit voices continued to communicate. He removed the battery from the radio, but the spirit voices continued to communicate through the speakers and messages could still clearly be heard, much to the amazement of all present. When Festa placed his ear against the speaker, he was in no doubt that the voice was coming through the radio. Some find it hard to believe and wonder how is it possible. But one theory is that Bocce is acting as a medium. And while not going into trance, which Bocce always remains in control of his device, it has been suggested that it is he who is acting as the real communication device, transmitting the energy and personalities of those in the spirit world through his contact with the radio. One example of this is that researchers have asked Bocce to leave the room and let them attempt contact through the radio, and they all have been unsuccessful. It has since been conducted that in order for spirit communication to take place, Bocce has to be present. Of course, this is another point that skeptics argue is suspicious. However, as already mentioned, none have been able to disprove the abilities of the radio. Okay, let's fast forward a little bit here. In 2000, after testing the EVP making program, Frank Sumption got the idea to create his own EVP device using radio sweep technology, thus creating Frank's box. His process sweeps across radio broadcasts, producing an endless stream of bits of human speech, music, and white noise. In his method, the white noise is not as important as in other devices and experiments. In other processes, it is believed that the white noise was necessary to the spirits to help produce words. In this process, the words the radio spits out are manipulated by the spirits in order to communicate in real time. Currently, this is the popular method that is being currently used. Many investigators have added pedals to help clean the sound up. Alright, the uh, next clips that I'm going to show you uh, is a couple of our own personal examples on uh, success that we've had with the spirit boxes and that so uh, just to give you an idea uh, on what it sounds like and that so all right take a look here Hey, hey, Mr. Gum. Hey, how you doing? That was pretty good. I'm doing fine. What about you? Peachy. All right. Hmm. Well, that's pretty. That's pretty good proof it works. Our final note to remember about. Instrumental Transcommunication, or ITC, and Electronic Voice Phenomenon, EVP, are that they are considered a part of the physical mediumship process, as the spirit's actions also affects the objects and the equipment. Moreover, we can notice these physical effects. So ultimately, it is not the equipment, but the operator or the person conducting the session that is key in ITC. Well, Jane, I hope that answers your question. And anybody that is out there uh, watching this, um, I hope it can give you a little insight into uh, what ITC is. Now, I want to throw in a note there that, like I said in the beginning, I was just barely skimming the surface on on this uh, particular subject as it's so vast and that so I know probably plenty of views have a lot more questions out there about this subject and I also want to mention that uh, just because I didn't list certain names or talk about them doesn't mean that they're 
contributions to this field is not important or anything. I just kind of wanted to hit everything as quick as I can without uh, getting sidetracked. So, if you want to know more information, feel free to ask questions, or if enough views ask out there, uh, Jane and I can uh, actually put a class together on ITC. So, just uh, go to the comments down there, write class, or just uh, message us your uh, your uh, questions in that. And also in the uh, descriptions, I've included uh, two links for the uh, videos that I've put in there. So, all right. Well, thank you uh, for watching, and uh, we'll be back to talk to you soon.